Hey guys, Jay here, bringing you a topic that I'll let you guys choose on Twitter, as I promised, using Straw Poll. So if you want to get involved in the channel and you want to be able to have some input on what videos you want me to make, head on over there, hit that follow button, and start watching for the Straw Polls. Even if you do nothing but that, I like to hear from you guys on what it is you want to see. After all, this is our channel, not necessarily my channel. At least that's the way that I personally see it. Get 10% off anything from Cooler Master at the CM store. See the description for details. Okay, what we're looking at here, a radiator, AKA a heat exchanger. All it does is take temperature out of fluid that's running through this. The interesting thing about radiators is even if you have no fans on here, there's a ton of passive cooling that goes on. My, my 900D behind me, if I turn all the fans off on the radiator and put the system under full load, it only runs about 10 degrees Celsius hotter than if I have the fans on and it's still a shit ton cooler than if I was doing air cooling on it. So radiators just by nature are taking heat out of the coolant and exhausting it to the atmosphere because of what this core does. So we're gonna talk about four aspects of the radiator. The materials used to build it, the core and what it does, the thickness of the radiator and why it matters and how many fans you should use or how big of a radiator you should use for your system. So. The materials, you'll see people talk about brass copper or aluminum or full copper. Full copper is more expensive because copper is, a, is kind of a semi-precious metal. However, it has the best corrosive properties of radiators. So it means you don't really have to worry about there being a lot of corrosion in your system because copper is very corrosion resistant. In fact, the only way you're gonna get copper in your loop is if you introduce aluminum pretty much. So full copper radiator is best because it has uh, best corrosive properties. But does it mean it cools better than a brass copper? Absolutely not. Typically brass copper means you have brass end tanks, which are these pieces on the end of the core, and you have an aluminum uh, fins and a copper core or something like that. But radiators like this one here from Alpha Cool have all copper construction, copper rows, copper fins, which make up the core. Uh, and this is what's doing all the cooling right here. In fact, you can even see in the video right there, it's kind of black when I go that way and copper when I go that way. Alpha Cool's concept here is that any paint applied to the fin is only decreasing its efficiency when it comes to cooling. So they just do a quick dusting on the core, but they do a full paint job obviously on the other parts of it. So that's why as I turn it, you guys may see it's like more of a bare copper. You could paint this if you wanted, but for the cooling capacity and since your fans typically cover it up, it's not a big deal. So full copper radiator, if you can afford it, brass copper is just fine too. Now let's go ahead and talk about the um, FPI of the core. These little zigzags, these zigzag piece of metals here, zigzag, that's a weird word, zigzag piece of metal. Really what it does is it's increasing the amount of metal that's absorbing the temperature. So you have a lot of different FPIs, fins per inch, you know, seven, 10, 16, 20, 30. So what does it mean and why should you choose it? Rule of thumb, if you can't fit a lot of radiator space in your computer, Let's say you can only fit a triple, just this triple, and you wanna cool a graphics card and a CPU, you're gonna want a higher FPI than something like this because you can increase the surface area or the overall cooling capacity of the radiator by manipulating the core. It's not just about the amount of fans that are on it. This part right here matters the most. So higher FPI, if you have to go with a smaller radiator or you can't fit more radiator space in there, or if you can fit like this monstrosity behind me here, you could put three of these triples, or excuse me, four of these triples in there if you wanted. Uh, you could get away with low FPI like this Alpha Cool, which is 10 fins per inch, and run slower speed fans on them. The downside of high FPI fans uh, or radiators is that they are more noisy because there's more restriction for the air to get through. It creates turbulence because the air naturally off a fan wants to come out sideways, kind of at a 45 degree angle but the fins force that air back to straight and it gets very turbulent. The air is bouncing around in there and it just gets noisy. That's why if you take a fan and hold it in the open atmosphere, it's quiet. And the moment you put it up to a fan grill, it kind of goes, you know, that's, that's a good fan impression, huh? So high FPI, if you have to go with a smaller radiator, low FPI, if you can put multiple radiators in. Now let's go ahead and talk about the thickness of the radiator. You'll see something like this here, which is a 30 mil rad uh, thickness, which is very common. My radiators are 45 millimeters thick and Alpha Cool offers them all the way up to 80 millimeters thick. That's like this, that's like 
that big compared to this. It's ridiculous. I don't like it. It just looks bad. And it doesn't fit in that many cases. And you don't gain that much cooling capacity, quite honestly, because there becomes a point when you are past the point of diminishing, dimish, diminishing, diminishing returns when it comes to the surface area. Because the rule of thumb is you really only need about one 120 millimeter space of radiator per component that you're cooling. So theoretically, a triple is more than enough to cool a graphics card and a CPU at stock clocks because it's all about wattage displacement and how much wattage in TDP that your cooling system can dissipate. Last thing we're going to talk about, um, as I kind of already mentioned, how many 120 millimeter or 140s or 200s that you really need. Well, my rule of thumb is if I can fit a triple rad and I can fit a 240 millimeter rad, say in the front of the case and one of these in the top of the case, this is a better option than just this because it allows me to run more fans, more surface area at slow speeds, giving you what really water cooling is really known as being beneficial for other than just amazing water or coolant temps for your components. It's also the fact that you can um, run slower speed fans. So that's why I run in my system a 45 mil thick quad radiator as well as a triple. Now, I mean, I've got some, obviously I've got a lot of radiators here and you can see when it comes to the size of these radiators, if I can do this without damaging anything, there is quite the difference here when it comes to size sizes of these radiators. As you can see, I mean, there's the bottom, they're all lined up. There's a lot of difference there. And the amount of cooling capacity between the, all of these is quite massive. So why do I have the stacker sitting behind me? Guys, I'm torn and I'm kind of turning to you here on, a little, on some advice. I love the concept of the stacker, not the 945 they call it with all of them on there, just the 935 and the 915 on the bottom. Because I want to do, I want to mod it to fit two of the 480 millimeter rads in the bottom and then do like acrylic tubing through there. It just would look really nice. Wouldn't offer me any benefit over the 900D whatsoever. It would just be a, a modding project. And you guys keep asking me how I feel about the stacker and what I could do with it. So I'm kind of turning to you guys to tell me, what do you think? Should I mod the stacker to fit what I feel would be the perfect cooling case? So I'm just curious as to what you guys think. Put it down in the comments. So what size radiators are you using? Are you water cooling? And why, what radiators are you using? Tell me, how, what's your setup? Let everyone else see down in the, in the comments there because you guys have been a pretty awesome community here so far on YouTube helping each other out. And I'd like to continue that trend. So if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do with it. If you hated it, you also know where you can stick it. And if you're new here, I sure hope you check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, stick around. I'd love to have you. I'm gonna get out of here. Follow me on Twitter, look for the straw polls. I wanna hear from you guys what videos you want me to make. And as always guys, See you in the next video.